Welcome back to Cutting It Close, guys. Today, we are making the world famous, well, at least famous for me, the man stand, the docking station, the thing that started it all. Many of you have already seen the documentary that we made over the man stand. We put our heart and soul into it. It has over a million views. And if you have it, go check it out. I sold over 50,000 of these, most of them when I was in college. And I think to date, we're at $2.8 million worth of these have been sold. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made them when I first started out. I'm gonna have the file for you and give you everything you need so you can make it on your own, so you can experience the man stand way. Where we're currently standing is our new studio, so this looks a little bit different. We actually sanded all those docking stations right here, but we didn't have all this stuff around us. This was horse stalls. So this used to be a dirt floor. We eventually concreted it. There used to be hay right over there, a bucket of water right here that I used to clean up when I was a kid. Over the last couple of weeks, we built this new studio because we have a ton of big things coming for you that we're gonna talk about later in the video. And I couldn't be more excited to start showing you some of that. So let's hop right into it. But before we make it, just like all CNC projects, we gotta program it. So this right here is the original man stand design. I do have it on CSC Workshop if you guys wanna check that out. As you can see, it's pretty simple. I only had a couple tool paths. So this first one is just a pocket tool path. I call it bowl. It goes down 0.26 of an inch. For all of these tool paths, I only used a quarter inch down cut bit. So that's going at about 120 inches a minute. And then I'd come back by with this profile coming at 100 inches a minute. And what that would look like is it'd cut it out and it'd leave these two little, all these little tabbies on it. Because at the time on this particular CNC, I didn't have a vacuum table. So I had to have a way to keep everything together from shifting. And so what I did is leave this little eggshell slash onion skin. Some people call it an onion skin. I call it an eggshell. Grew up on a farm raising chickens. I didn't raise onions. So it's an eggshell. And what it would do is it'd leave this tiny little layer. So whenever this bit came by with this second pass and cut it all the way off, the parts didn't want to move that much. As we started making those and as we started growing, the tool pass got a little bit more complicated. And what it ended up looking like is something like this whenever I got my four foot by eight foot CNC. Now I started having a vacuum table so I didn't have to connect too many of these tabs together. But one thing to keep in mind is that my bits got a lot faster. So I went from that 100 inches a minute on the profile toolpath to 340 inches a minute. And all of this is at 18,000 RPMs. And then we grew even more. So after a couple years of cutting them out just on the Swift, cutting out, what is that, 15 at a time, that toolpath took about 45 minutes. And we bought the Shop Saber 5 foot by 10 foot where I can fit two full sheets. And this is what that toolpath ended up looking like. And so we went from cutting out one over there on the original. And four years later, we were cutting out this many at a time. I believe it was 37 of them. And I had a heck of a vacuum to, uh, table at the time. And so I didn't have to use really any tabs. Um, just a little piece right here because these pieces wanted to fly and break the bits. I started doing a little round over right here with a round over bit. The main difference on this, besides just having just a lot of them and it cutting them all out and looking super cool, I was able to go so much faster because that machine is so much more rigid. So as you can see, this profile toolpath was going at 410 inches a minute in a 200 plunge rate, cutting all the way through in one pass. And that was just with that quarter inch bit. So that's a quarter inch down cut, cutting all the way through in one pass, which is absolutely bonkers, what those bits can handle and how much we underutilize them when we have smaller machines, like the one we're gonna cut it out on today, because it just cannot handle that high speed. So, so let's go ahead and cut one of these out right here, this original docking station on this 12 by 20 inch piece of Baltic birch. And uh, let's see the process on how it's done. So now that we've got a program, let's get this bad boy cut out. I'm gonna come grab a piece of wood, go to my CNC, and I'm gonna plug the website because we just launched CICWorkshop.com. Put it on the side of the CNC so it's official. Anything that you see here in the video, you're gonna be able to get on the website. So whether it's this piece of wood, which is 12 by 20 half inch Baltic birch, you can get it. Whether it's the bits we use, you can get that. Guys, check it out. I hope y'all love it. And if y'all don't like anything about it, leave that and we'll contact us for them because there's definitely some stuff we got to work on there. But I built it myself and I am a CNC operator, not a website designer. So, so let's get this bad boy cut out. And see, I don't like putting my bit in right from the get go unless it's already in there because sometimes that bit hits you and it cuts your arm and you get an arm cut right here because you're reaching underneath it. And it really freaking hurts. As you can saw in the programming, I only use a quarter inch down cut. It's on CSC Workshop, check it out. 
So I haven't ran this in years on this CNC, but I'm gonna bowl it out at 40% step over 120 inches a minute and then do all my profiles at 100 inches a minute. It's gonna be loud, it's gonna scream, but it's gonna be okay because I've ran these bits at 400 inches a minute and they're just fine. So it's just the machine, not the bit that's screaming. Let's do it. So a couple things to notice on this. This is, you know, it's almost powder. So if I can kind of mess with it, it kind of grinds into powder. That's that's when you know you don't have like the correct chip load because it should be a little bit bigger chips than this. This is a little too powdery. And my bit was a little bit hot, um, not too crazy hot because it wasn't a big tool path. But since I did use a down cut, I have this nice edge that doesn't require a lot of sanding. So as I touch this bit, it's not actually too hot. It's probably about 110 degrees, which is not too bad. If I was running it slower, that thing would be on fire right now. So now I'm gonna go back and cut out that eggshell. And all we have to do now is you just pop it out. So just like we used to do it, we used to grab this wrench and hit it right here. We take this little piece and hit it right here. This is like the funnest. This brings back so many memories, guys. You have no idea. I mean, I have done this to thousands and thousands of these. We take this wrench and we hit it right here, just like this. Nice. Yeah, and so this is kind of what it comes out to be. Now all we have to do, router it, sand it, stain it. But first, who put this here in the corner of the studio? I did, that's who because we're gonna do a giveaway and we're gonna do a giveaway every single Sunday on all of our videos and you only have 24 hours to enter. So this first giveaway, we're gonna give away a three pack of bits. So you're gonna have your quarter inch down cut, eighth inch down cut and a six degree V bit. And we're giving away one of our pre-glued panels, this two foot by two foot maple panel right here. Um, this is one of the panels that we're gonna sell on the website. Check out the link in the description and the secret code is maple syrup. That'll get you an extra five entries. Another side note, this is dad's old school router. Dad's very old bit. I'm pretty sure the bit is just as old as the router and you get burn marks, but uh, I'll just have fun sending those out later. Thanks, dad. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to do something if you don't have the right stuff or don't have the best equipment. I mean, this is a Harbor Freight sander right here. All it matters is that you're making a product that sells that you're proud of. And then once the product starts selling, you can buy the nicer equipment to make the stuff, right? You don't have to have nice stuff to really start making this. I mean, like, obviously this is CNC cut, so you're like, Ryan, it's CNC cut, all that good stuff. But apply that to other things. Like, you don't have to have nice stuff, you just gotta start selling stuff. And if you don't put it out there for people to know that you sell it, then you're never gonna sell it, right? I mean, you, even if you make the nicest stuff in the world, if you don't take pictures and put it out there, then people don't know about it. So this is just a good, humbling thing for me to make stuff like we used to do it the old way, but it's also like bringing back some other memories of like, yeah, this is how we did it until we made a $2 million of these or $3 million of these or whatever, right? But this is the way it started. So it doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be flashy, and you can use a Harbor Freight sander. It is okay. We got to detail sand it. So that's what I always called palm sanding. That typically took about three minutes and then detail sanding took the other three minutes. And so whenever we sanded them, I expected our guys to do about 10 an hour. And if they did over 10 an hour, I'd pay them an extra dollar per docking station, stuff like that. What we used to do is, and what I'll do today is, I just take this piece of sandpaper and this is the original way of doing it. Anthony, the documentary even commented on this, like this. And this is how we did it. It was not fancy. It was not pretty, it was not sexy, but this is how we do the bowl. This is the way we did it, not for like the first 10, but like for the first like quarter million dollars in sales, we sanded it like this. We eventually got this oscillating, the multi-tool, and put a little triangle head on it and started doing it that way. We did use one of these from the beginning. We just take a piece of scrap, this is actually scrap paduk, this is a bad one, and tape it to a stick. Very sophisticated stuff we're doing in here, right? And so now we have our stick of sandpaper and you stick it in here. We're getting these hard to reach places. And then like right here, 
And then this groove right here, that's very hard to hit. That's the way we did it. Now to get this little slot, sometimes we took a handy dandy pencil and we wrapped the pencil the exact same way. So we're gonna stain this the way that we used to stain it. And our foam, we always just bought mattress toppers or found mattress topper, toppers at like the thrift stores and stuff like that and just cut our foam pads from there. What we do obviously is just dip this in and stain it just like anything else, right? Use some old t-shirts or whatever, which we would buy from the thrift store and cut them up. And then I realized they sell rags everywhere else. And so I didn't do that anymore. But this was the way we stained it. And we stained them like this probably for the first $500,000 in sales. We would stain them just like this. We'd have one person staining, one person wiping. When I finally got my bigger shop, what we ended up doing is we ended up making these stainless steel trays. We'd have a guy, boom, he'd dip it in this giant vat of stain, pull it out squeegee, give it to the next person right here. He would then take that sponge, get off all the excess, squeegee it back into the vat, and then he'd hand it to the next person, which was the fine sander or the detail wiper. And so it worked like a beautiful system. And then when we had to stain a lot, like I think the most we've stained in a day is like 1600 of these things in one day. And we'd have a team of six, two people that dipped in the giant vat, squeegeed it, pass it to the guy in the middle. So he would be able to do two. He'd take that sponge, wipe, 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 throw it to two other people. And those guys would do the finish wiping. And then we had the one person that would just put them on our drying racks. And so that's how we did it at, at scale. That is the way we scaled. This thing fits right there and that's it. That is a fully made man stand. And that's how you make a man stand. Now, is it super complicated? Is it gonna blow your mind? Is it the latest and greatest? No, but this thing is the thing that started it all, that started me on my journey. And I had to shoot it in our new studio because without this thing, we wouldn't have this studio. I wouldn't have the knowledge I have now. And so I hope y'all liked today's video. There is a ton more where that came from. CC Workshop is gonna be adding a whole bunch of products to it. I'm working on another project. I can't wait to roll out to y'all. And do not forget about the giveaway. Remember, maple syrup is the secret code. Thank y'all guys so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you like this new style, this new format we're doing. And remember guys, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right. In the new studio.